Hello friends and welcome back to my channel where we mainly discuss thrillers on Thursdays and I'm gonna admit it feels weird sitting down to just film a straight up book review because I haven't done that in a while which should not be the case since this is a booktube channel. My excuse and this is partially a valid one, is that I've been watching so much TV so that I could film my previous video, which was the 2018 horror TV show Best and Worst video. But I'm very excited to, from now on, get back to the core of what this channel is about, which is recommending and discussing books. But today I'm going to be reviewing The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Zero spoilers as usual. I'm gonna go through the summaries, pros and cons as normal. And I'll say first, if Kristen Hanna sounds familiar, that's because she is the author of The Nightingale that was a hugely popular book. I know she's written a ton of books, but that's the only other one I've read by her. It's a very good sweeping saga set in World War II. So I'm gonna get into the summary, and as I said, no spoilers, but this takes place in the 1970s. Our protagonist is Lenny, but some of the other main characters are her mother, Cora, and her dad, Ernt. Lenny is about 13 years old. Her father has come back from Vietnam. He's dealing with PTSD. He's also an alcoholic and abusive to Cora his wife, Lenny's mother, and one day someone he knows passes away in Alaska and leaves this tiny cabin and plot of land to Ernt, and Ernt thinks that he's dealing with all of these demons and that going to Alaska and moving his family there will be a fresh start for all of them. So he uproots his family and moves to Alaska, and I'll say it's not as if he's moving to a small city in Alaska. They are moving to middle of nowhere Alaska, and the people of this tiny, I wouldn't even call it a town, and the other people in the town tell this Albright family that they have no idea what they're doing, no idea what they're in for. So getting into the pros, my favorite aspect was learning about life in Alaska and what it was like to move there, learning about dealing with what it's actually like to go with that many hours of sunlight in the day or during the time period where it's constant sunlight, how to hunt, how to utilize all the different machinery they need to use, and also how Alaska has been changing over time because people love this idea of just moving into the last frontier when they really have no idea what they're getting themselves into. And during the story, I was wondering how much of this was true, how much research the author did, and then I read a bit about Kristen Hanna and a lot of her family has actually lived in Alaska for many years, so she definitely knows what she's talking about. I also adore her writing style, the way she crafts the atmosphere. You feel trapped in Alaska, you feel trapped in this town, you feel trapped in the cabin, trapped in Cora and Earth's marriage, and you feel cold and isolated, and she just sets that mood so well. So although it's a difficult story to read, I also think it's a very good one to read now that it's November and it's getting a bit chillier. And for my final pro, I don't know if I would really call this a pro, but she is an expert at really tugging at your heartstrings. I saw a lot of gifs online when people were reviewing this with a lot of just babies crying because this book made a lot of people very sad and, I, and I'll admit when I was kind of like sure I'm not gonna cry and then for the last portion of the book I was actively sobbing and I didn't even realize it until I touched my face and I know a lot of people are like you can't say the end of the book is sad that's a spoiler all of Kristen Hanna's books make you cry at least that's the impression I'm getting so I don't consider that a spoiler my one con is I would say sometimes the pacing is a little bit weird some scenes feel incredibly drawn out and then very important scenes seem to go by within just two pages. But my main con in this has to do with both of her books that I've read, The Nightingale included, and that's that sometimes it just feels like she's structuring a scene with the main intent of just making you cry and the way people die. Again, I don't consider that a spoiler. I'm not going to say who's dying. This book takes place over a long period of time. Of course, people are going to be dying. But it just feels like the way that people die, she's also trying to make you cry. And I know you could say, well, isn't that always going to be an author's intent that you care about characters? And at the same time, it just, reading a scene sometimes feels like a bit of a lifetime movie. And I think I said that when I reviewed The Nightingale as well. So it's just the sweeping saga that's excellent and so well written. And then something really dramatic and emotional will happen and I'm just like, Oh, it just doesn't feel realistic and it feels a bit false. But overall, I'm not gonna rate this out of creepy branches because it's not a creepy book, although a lot of it is very upsetting, but I think I gave this about four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it, but some scenes were just a bit melodramatic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this book. I've now read, I feel like, two of her more popular books, but are there any other books by Kristen Hanna that you would recommend? And are there any other wilderness survival stories that you would recommend? So again, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I'll see you all next Thursday.